But this is not for the big classes here. Yeah, it, it, calculus classes. because it's not too big. I mean, it's for calculus. Oh, really? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe it's not even beginner for calculus. No, because uh, no. yeah, because we have three hundred. Here you, you only have eighty, maybe. Yeah. So, yeah. But this is one of the bigger classes. Uh huh. Yeah. And because this is this is not uh, <coughs> accessible from the building, or yeah, but they don't know this. Okay. This is in the map tower. Yeah. Okay. Okay. for the introduction and uh, I want to thank the colloquium committee for this nice invitation. Uh, I was already here in uh, August, so I know I know Columbus in uh, August and uh, in the colder weather as well. So <clears throat> I will try to be as uh, elementary as possible. So let me uh, start with the following data. So K will be, I will work over a base field which will slowly disappear, so it will always be assumed to be there. Uh, it will be a perfect field. And if you don't know what is a perfect field, I will not define it. Everything what I'm going to talk about today is also uh, interesting and non-trivial over the complex numbers. So if you only know the field of complex numbers, you can assume K is C. Uh, and we will work with the basic object. 
somehow, which is the analog of the category of uh, differentiable manifold, if you do ge differential geometry, and over a given field, you have an analog of that over K, which is called the category of smooth K schemes, okay? It's the analog. I will give you an idea of that. So smooth, and there are finite type K schemes. I will give you an idea of this. Maybe I should cut this. Okay. Uh, so there are two properties here, smooth and finite type. So let me make this a bit more concrete for K equals C. Finite type K scheme. So in a while, K will disappear. I will say scheme or variety, and it will always mean K over K, okay? It will be always fixed at some point. A finite type K scheme. So a scheme is obtained by gluing the basic pieces of the theory of schemes, affine schemes. So a finite type K scheme is obtained by covering, so it, there is an open cover by finitely many, because it's a, it's a quasi-compact, affine uh, finite type uh, schemes. So uh, let A be, so K is C here, okay? Um, a finite type C algebra. For each such algebra, finite type C algebra, you can assign a geometric object over C, the spectrum of A. This is an affine C, um, affine C, uh, finite type. Finite type comes from the fact that A is a finite type C algebra. So what is the geometric, uh, so I will not define what is this. It's a topological space with a sheaf of commutative ring. And for such an algebra, you can define such an object in a mechanical way. But the geometric inside of this is the following. If you choose x1, x, n are a set of uh, generators of A over C. When you say that, so by definition, it's a finite type C algebra. So you can choose always finitely many. If you do this, then you are in fact writing A as a quotient of a polynomial ring in n variables corresponding to this element. I map this modulo uh, an ideal such that A is isomorphic to the quotient of the polynomial ring by the ideal here. Now by Hilbert's theorem, we know that this uh, ring is Noetherian, an ideal is finitely generated automatically. So we can always choose, it's not unique, a family of polynomial P1, Pm here, such that you can write this uh, algebra this way. And uh, so the geometry of this correspondence here is that you should think, if you don't know exactly what is the spectrum, uh, this writing give you um, an embedding, so this affine scheme becomes a closed subset, closed subscheme into the affine space over C, which you can roughly, so about C to the power N, it's a spectrum, and so it's not exactly this, it's not a set of points, but it corresponds to the affine space of dimension N over C, right? let's see, it's a spectrum of the polynomial ring C, in n variables. And you think about this as the object, the geometric object, uh, which is a zero locus of the family of polynomials here. Okay, so read this, zero locus. So it's very uh, intuitive, okay? So it's really uh, correspond to the problem, you are in Cn, you have m polynomial here, and you are trying to understand the set of uh, points here, which are commonly zeros of this family of polynomials, okay? So it's a affine, uh, finite type C scheme. If moreover, so, and then a uh, finite type scheme is obtained by gluing some way, uh, this kind of object, okay? Smooth, if moreover, so now we are doing some differential geometry, 
if moreover the family p1 pm of polynomial satisfies the Jacobian criterion. Criterion. I mean, here m would be assumed to be less or equal to n. You need less equation as a number of variable and the dimension of the ambient space. So by which I mean um, at any point, at any solution of this polynomial here uh, in this uh, affine space, x of spec A, uh, the one of the extractive determinant of the Jacobian matrix, so the M, M, so we assume M is less or equal to N. So the matrix I'm going to write is an M times N matrix, rectangular, but you can extract a couple of M, M square matrices. And one of the determinants of that matrix should be invertible when you evaluate uh, on the point X. Okay, when you, a point correspond to a maximal ideal here, so to a map from A to C, you compute this determinant, you map it to C, to this map, it should be invertible. It's the, just a natural uh, analog of the Jacobian criterion. So one of the extractive MM determinant of the Jacobian matrix, take the partial derivative of the PJ XI, which is an NM matrix, is invertible at X. So it means when you evaluate through the morphism to C corresponding to the point X, it's uh, non-zero. So, so to say, um, an affine smooth scheme, the way I define here, is really uh, basically the same definition as a properly embedded a differentiable manifold in CN, but instead of using only differentiable maps, it's really the definition of a differentiable manifold here, locally. Uh, instead of differentiable maps, you just use polynomials. So it's, uh, you have much less, of course, uh, polynomials than differentiable maps, but it's exactly the same definition. And it's really uh, exactly equivalent to being smooth in this abstract sense. So you can generalize this uh, approach over any field. In fact, over anything, over any scheme, okay? But we'll concentrate on uh, a given field K. So uh, now example, of course, the affine space is smooth. So this is the spectrum of the polynomial ring. And we saw the case of C, but over any field, you can define the spectrum of the polynomial ring. It's the affine space of dimension N uh, is a smooth affine scheme, K scheme. So more interesting and for us important, the nth projective space, Pn over K. I told you here, I gave the example of C, it's more general and then uh, very, uh, Shortly, I will remove, there will be always a base field K somewhere and everything will be uh, over the field K, um, which is, as in topology, you can define the projective space as follows. You take the affine space of dimension N plus one, you remove the zero section over K, you have an action of the multiplicative group A1 minus zero, the units of the affine line, okay? So it's a group called the multiplicative group, GM. So, sorry, it's uh, close to C. So this is C and this is GM, the multiplicative group. And this defines the projective space here. And this uh, object as a scheme can be covered by N plus one affine spaces. I think this is the idea that any scheme can be covered by open affine uh, schemes of finite type, and here each of these is smooth. So this is a smooth scheme uh, over K, okay? It will be very important. And now the main object of study, uh, not only the smooth scheme, uh, 
main objects of study are uh, projective smooth k schemes x that is x is smooth scheme so a smooth k scheme is a k scheme which can be covered by these affine schemes for which each of these uh, given uh, family here satisfies the Jacobian mean. So a smooth scheme is the one for which you can do this, okay? Uh, for instance, PN and so on. And for us, a smooth reactive scheme is a smooth K scheme uh, which can be embedded as a closed, moreover, closed subscheme of PN for some n. Some n. But you can embed it as a closed subscheme. So it's a smooth scheme. Locally, it satisfies this kind of thing. But globally, you can embed it into some PN here. This condition is the analog of being compact. Uh, in algebraic geometry, a scheme tends, a finite type scheme tends to be quasi compact for any uh, open covering, if you annex or finitely many. So the compactness is not really the right one. The correct analog is to be projective. In fact, proper, but for us, projective is enough. So the category of uh, projective smooth K scheme is really, if you look at the definition here, the analog over the field K of the category of compact differentiable manifold without boundary, compact manifold, differentiable manifold, is the analog over K of the category of compact differentiable manifold. So there is really a very precise analog over any field of this category. And so I was born in uh, algebraic topology. My advisor was an uh, expert. He explained me a lot of uh, the classification of compact differential manifold, which is rather incredible, that in I dimension, I enough dimension, you can understand very precisely, up to deformorphism, compact differential manifolds using surgery theory. I was always uh, fascinated by this. Now you have the analog of that over any field. So the question is, what can you do? So, uh, of course, it's not so easy. What I want to explain for is that for some kind of such projective smooth schemes, uh, I hope to be able to at least to settle uh, something analogous to this, okay? So I will try to define this, and this is what happened in my title as A1 connected. So this is a strong property for this kind of smooth schemes here. I will define it right now, and I hope that for this kind of schemes, you can say a lot using this A1 homotopy theory stuff, okay? Um, the problem is uh, in topology, classical topology, you take a compact differential manifold, you can say, oh, you have finitely many irreducible components, each of it is A1 con uh, connected. Here it's not true. It's true that projective smooth case scheme is a union of finitely many irreducible components. But these irreducible components are not A1 connected in my sense. So it's the first problem. So we have to clean up and to say what is to be A1 connected. So this happened to be possible, so some time ago, we, with Vladimir Wojewodski, we define uh, the A1 homotopy category and more generally A1 homotopy theory. And in particular, we could define for any such uh, schemes uh, the pi zero A1. And if you have a rational point, the pi one and the pi n A1 of x at any x, where x is a rational k point of x. So if you give a point, so schemes are topological space, you can say a point, but you have to take a rational point, a point with radio field k, 
you can define for n greater or equal to one higher uh, homotopy shields. So these are shields, this is the problem. They are not sets, but they are look like sets. So the pi zero A1. We not really use this. Uh, I will just explain what it means to be trivial. So A1 connecting means that the pi zero is trivial. Okay. One says, so I think from now on, I will stop putting a K here. So K is fixed until the end of the talk and everything is over K. Okay, so PN of K means, a PN means PN over K and so on. Uh, I have this trouble because if you don't do this with GM, it's a mess because GM, you have to put parentheses. So it's, we are working over K, definitely. Uh, X, so which is a, smooth scheme or a relative smooth scheme is A1 connected. Uh, if the pi zero A1 is the point, trivial. Okay, so uh, trivial as a sheaf, so it's a spectrum of the field as a sheaf of sets. But in fact, so if you don't know the definition here, you cannot understand what it means, but I will explain what it means. It's a theorem fact, which I proved with uh, uh, Azok some time ago, for X smooth projective, A1 connected means exactly naively A1 chain connected. So it means that we can forget about this and I can define you what it is to, to be uh, A1 connected. Smooth projective is A1 connected in this abstract sense, if and only if, for any field extension of the base field K, any, you can reduce to finite type extension always of K, but it means any, uh, any finite extension, but also transcendental extension of K, K of X, K of finitely many variables and so on and so on. So any finite type field extension of K, two uh, rational, F points, it's basically the uh, most natural definition you can, naive definition you could find of A1 connected. It means uh, like uh, chain connected, like arcwise connected. Now in topology, you say pi zero, the set of arcwise co connected components, two points are in the same component if you can draw a line. Continuous map from zero one to X with X unity one and the other X unity the other one. Here use A1, and uh, so you have to take all the fields because to take only K is not enough for some reason. But then it's completely naive. Two rational F points, it means solution uh, from uh, our scheme here, uh, not over K, uh, but uh, over F. Even for C, it makes sense because you can take C of X, for instance, the fraction field in one variable over C. This is non trivial, okay? So you, if two such rational F point of X are connected by a chain of finite many morphism from A1 over F to X, morphism of scheme over K here. Not, so you can extend X over the base field F here, and then it's a morphism of A1. Okay, so it's, this is well defined here. Um, the point is, for instance, in topology, if you map, if you consider morphism on the interval to X and you uh, consider the naive relation, it's an equivalence relation. Uh, you can concatenate uh, interval and so on. Here you cannot, so you have to take this, uh, connect it by finitely many, and that's it. Okay, so this is a very concrete way to check something is uh, A1 connected. Um, example, of course. All these examples here, Pn over k, are A1 connected in this sense. Because you can check here, uh, so this is even A1 contractible, nothing, so everything can be contracted to the point here. And this is covered by finitely many A n uh, of k, so I told you I remove the k, so we remove it. Uh, another interesting example is if x is A1 connected in this sense, and uh, you take 
a closed subset. So this bar, inclusion with a bar, I mean a closed subset or closed subscheme in X of co-dimension at least two everywhere. So not just by one equation locally, but by at least two independent equations. Uh, then the complement X minus Z is A1 connected. Because you can always deform, uh, if you have such an A1, you remove something of co-dimension two, you can always connect uh, at a rational point also using these kind of things. For instance, non trivial example, A n minus zero. If you remove the origin of the affine space, it's A1 connected, at least if n is greater or equal to two. Yeah, to uh, characterize, yeah, it's a characterization. It was done in uh, this article with uh, Azok, but if uh, X satisfy uh, this, then it is A1 connected in the abstractions, whatever, yeah? But it's not clear that it is equivalent. I'm not completely sure, it's maybe equivalent. I think it's, it's equivalent, uh, and here I use uh, K-perfect. So K-perfect makes life uh, easier. Uh, here I have the problem. Mm. Maybe I will use only two. Whoa. No, it's okay, it's okay. No, I know it. I have to make it from the middle. I will only use two because three I have to. Yeah. Yeah. So now we know the what is a connected so of course if you look at for instance people in the room would be disappointed if you look at an abelian variety it's a smooth productive variety but it is equal to its pi zero a1 in the sense of uh, that we define so this is gone here so what we are so this condition here is some kind of something between uh, um, being rational or something like that. So it's a, another weak version of being rational. It's not equivalent at all, but it's something like that. We'll see at the end for smooth projective surfaces over K, uh, it's in fact equivalent to be A1 connected in the sense and to be uh, rational. This use, it's not formal, it's used the classification and all these techniques. So now we know what is to be A1 connected, and now the problem is, uh, if you know a bit on uh, classical topology, geometric topology, uh, the way uh, it was discovered, the surgery process and so on, it came first from John Minow, who said, let's try to classify highly connected uh, compact differentiable manifolds. And he said, we pick up uh, a smooth a compact manifold of dimension 2n, which is n minus 1 connected. And you have plenty of examples. Sphere, but you have many of them. And he, uh, he invented this uh, plumbing stuff. So he showed that you can modify this. And, uh, uh, by uh, removing disk and so on and saying so this was invented this way. The problem is that this step here, uh, so which one is not parallel to the surface? Yeah, that one? Uh, the one with the okay, so I will try to, yeah. Uh, but here, here's the problem. If, so fact, so X is productive smooth, F, if X is uh, a1 connected automatically, and this makes uh, life a bit uh, uh, harder than or smooth projective, the pi one is non trivial. At least for the dimension uh, positive. And the point is uh, contractible, so there is nothing. But if you take anything which is A1 connected, projective smooth, then uh, the pi one is non-trivial. This comes from the fact that the Picard group uh, of such a smooth projective variety is non-trivial.
and the PICAR group is directly connected to the PI1 as follows. It's true because if you can embed X in PN for a big N, you can take the restriction of the uh, line model over PN, the conical bundle over PN, uh, to X. If the PICAR group of X is trivial, then this restriction should be trivial, isomorphic to O of X, and then it should be generated by N plus one section, like for PN. But uh, if X is projective smooth, the global section of O, X, are constant, trivial. So there is a contradiction, and it means X has to be of uh, uh, zero dimension. So this is non-trivial, and the Picard group, so it is the cohomology group of X with value in GM, Zariski, et al., whatever, by Hilbert theorem, and this is by topological classification, morphism in the homotopy category from X to the classifying space of GM, and uh, because X is A1 connected, and like in topology, it is the set of morphies from the fundamental group at any rational point to GM. So this is non-trivial, so it means the group, the shift of group here is non-trivial. By the way, I forgot to say A1 connected is a strong assumption, implies X is irreducible and admits rational points. So all this, so the people uh, trying to find rational points would be disappointed, so A1 connected uh, threw away all these uh, facts, okay? You have to be irreducible and to have at least a rational point, and then to be able to connect them all together. Uh, so now you have a non-trivial fundamental group. So example, so, I will not do this, one may develop. This is something I did after uh, the work with uh, uh, Vladimir Wojewski. One may develop the theory of covering, A1 covering. You can use the same definition, unique, uh, so uh, lifting property with respect to uh, A1, weak uh, configuration, and so on and so on. So there is a nice theory of A1 covering and um, so here are the main example, which I like very much. So this uh, plus one minus zero. So I define Pn at the beginning over C as a quotient of Cn plus one minus zero modulo Gn. So this is true over any field, over any scheme. So you have this torsor action of Gm on that here, on each coordinate here, and the quotient is Pn. In fact, for n greater or equal to 2, this is the universal covering of Pn. This is simply connected. Uh, the pi one so is more complicated, but in nice cases like this one, you can also uh, compute it. So each time you can compute the pi one, you can compute it naively. So you could say you can try to map A1 to X, and uh, if you have a given a rational point here, such a morphism which maps zero and one both here to the same point here. So this is called an A1 loop, okay? And in fact, the section, this is a sheaf, the pi one of X is a sheaf. If you uh, compute uh, the section of uh, this sheaf over a field extension of F of K, you can compute it this way in most cases. It's not formal again, but in most of the cases I know, it's very naive and it's also true. And the problem is that to compute the fundamental group of here, it's not so easy, but you can prove by hands that this is true Yeah, That any loop here, uh, so universal covering means this is A1 connected, we know, and it's also simply A1 connected. And using this, so you have to avoid and to work with loop, but you can prove it if you want. We can prove it another way, but uh, so this is the universal covering. Universal covering of Pn. As a consequence, like in classical topology, the pi one of Pn, so A1 over any field at any rational point, is canonically, in fact, isomorphic to the multiplicative group Gm for n at least two. Okay. By the way, it can be a bit disturbing, but uh, the idea of all of this, one of the facts, is that 
as far as connectivity is concerned, connectivity, uh, uh, vanishing of homotopy sheaves and so on, the topology of the situation you have that you can map to the real world by taking real points is the right answer. So this intuition gives you exactly the right answer, not a complex one. If you take the complex point of this, this is completely wrong. Pn of C as a topological space is simply connected. Okay, but Pn of R is not. And the fundamental group is Z mod 2. And Gm over the real numbers is R star. If you look at the connected component, it's Z mod 2. Okay, so, and uh, this is the universal covering. It is Rpn, Sn, plus or minus 1. Okay, so it fits in this way. Even if you are working over an algebraic closely, you cannot embed this in R, but still, the intuition is there. Okay, so this is a, an example. And, um, <clears throat> well, however, so just to uh, dangerous curve, uh, I mentioned the Abelian varieties. So GM, in that case, is counted as a discrete object. Uh, the pi zero is equal to itself. And in fact, I told you it's rather analogous to Z mod two. So GM in this world should be considered as a, rather as a group of twisted order two. Not of, it's not Z mod two, but it's something like order two, okay? So it's constant, okay? And uh, yeah. But again, uh, on the real numbers, on the real field, it's, it fits. Um, so, yeah, so let me go on, yeah. So now let's consider more directly A1 connected uh, productive smooth scheme. So now, what can we say? Smooth projective. So projective is important because uh, many results are not true in that case, and it's like compact, as I mentioned at the beginning. Um, I think I'm done here. So there are a lot of stabilities. Huh? So um, I told you, so, so far we have seen basically PN as an example of A1 connected, projective smooth scheme, but you can build a lot of them. So if X is A1 connected, and Z uh, is a closed smooth, again, so it's like a, a compact, uh, subcompact differential manifold in X, okay, also smooth. Uh, it's closed, so it's also projective. Uh, smooth, closed smooth uh, okay, scheme. There is an operation of blowing up. The blow up of X at Z is also A1 connected and projective and smooth. So this operation, just this one, gives you a lot of examples. Okay? Uh, for instance, even for surfaces, you start from P2. And uh, so what is a close, smooth subscheme of dimension, uh, of co-dimension, uh, well, uh, of course, you have to assume co-dimension at least two, because if you blow up something hypersurface, it's equal to X itself. Okay, so there is no interest. But if you blow up something of co-dimension at least two, uh, then uh, the blow up is not isomorphic to X, but it's still projective smooth, okay? So basically, for surfaces, if you start from P2, you blow up a rational point, or even not a rational point, I only assume Z is a smooth K scheme, so if K is perfect, any finite field extension of the base field define um, a smooth K scheme. Uh, the spec L to spec K, if L is a finite field extension of K, perfect, is a smooth K scheme. So you can blow up any uh, closed point in X in a surface, and you get another smooth projective A1 connected surface. So this gives a lot of uh, uh, example of this uh, situation. The fundamental group I will not uh, mention here. So the blow up, I cannot explain what it is, but you have this situation. You have a canonical morphism from the blow up of X at Z to uh, X, and then uh, Z is here. And the pullback of Z 
through this morphism here is the projective bundle of the normal bundle of the uh, inclusion of Z in X. So because Z is smooth in X, there is a normal bundle, okay? Uh, like in differential geometry. And this operation of blowing up, so this is a closed subscheme here, in fact, replace this Z by the projective space. So it gives around Z all the direction, so, so to say, around Z. If you had a tubular neighborhood around Z, uh, you would replace uh, Z by uh, all the direction which uh, go from Z, okay? So if this is A1 connected, uh, even if this is not A1 connected, of connection at least two, this is A1 connected, projective smooth, and you have this situation. You can find some formula to compute the fundamental group. It's non-trivial. Okay. Uh, if this is A1 connected, you have a pi one here. If it's not A1 connected, it's worse. But if it is A1 connected, you have a pi one here, pi one here. Somehow you have a, a, the a van Kampen theorem. Okay. The fundamental group of this one will be uh, the co-limit of this and this. But to compute this one is complicated. But in this way, you get a lot of example, and the fundamental group. And the pi one a one of the blow up uh, can be not computed but described as a shift. In the small, in the easiest example, P two. I told you the fundamental group of uh, P two is G M. If you blow up a rational k point in P two, you get a surface uh, with uh, P two with a blowing up of there. Then the fundamental group will be a formal sum in the category of uh, fundamental groups of GM and GM, free product. So it's non commutative. If you blow up an, another uh, rational point, again, GM, star, GM, star, GM, so it's get um, like free groups, okay, free products. So it's really, uh, so the fundamental group of uh, smooth A1 connected surface is really rich. Uh, you have a lot of uh, non trivial, uh, and it's really, in fact, we prove with uh, Arvin Asok that uh, the fundamental group up to isomorphism characterize the homotopy type of a smooth A1 connective surface over a perfect field. Okay, so it's characterized by the isomorphism class. But I want to do more today uh, to <clears throat> try to explain a way to classify up to isomorphism, not up to homotopy. So now here's um, where we come to this uh, cellular chain complex stuff, which is the new Is it horizontal now? No. Mm. But I think this is the reason why it's so hard. I want us to call this number and uh, make fix this. So here I have to introduce a new notion, which is a bit technical, but which is very natural. It is somehow the analog, which comes naturally in this uh, theory, of uh, the category of abelian groups in the classical topology. In the following sense, the category of abelian group appears naturally as the place where all the homotopy groups live. Okay. Uh, the homotopy group of any topological space are, for big n enough, are abelian groups. There are also an uh, intermediate category of uh, group where the fundamental group lives. Okay. It's a bit more technical to define, but it's natural. So let me uh, so strictly A1 invariant shifts. So A1 invariant shift So first shift. What is a shift? I will not give the definition of shift. Once you accept the basic object, smooth uh, scheme over K. These are all the spaces you can build up from smooth K schemes in some way. So it's like if you are working with differentiable manifold and you look at the topological space, so it's singular, it's not smooth, 
But still, you can uh, map a manifold, different level manifold, to a space by using continuous maps. And in this way, you get a shift on the category of uh, different level uh, manifolds. In this setting, you can also build a category of extended uh, spaces or shifts. Uh, okay, so if M is a shift for any smooth scheme over K, you can define its section over X. Exactly, a shift is like a space or singular space, whatever, and you can map X to this shift, okay? And these are called a section, okay? Uh, okay, it's not a set of morphism from X to a space, but it's a, a trick. Uh, shift, in fact, is a functor on the opposite category of smooth case scheme, okay? Satisfying some growing properties. But at least for any X, Smooth, you can define a section here. So it, and you think about this as a map from X to M. Okay, satisfying uh, some gluing condition. For instance, if X is covered by two open subscheme, uh, a section of M over one subscheme U and one uh, the other subscheme V, which agree on the intersection then we'll be able to, uh, you will be able to extend it uniquely to X. So this is a shift, a gluing property for shifts and so on. So you can define this very precisely. I don't say in which topology, it's not really the Zariski topology, but it's almost. And you can define the notion of shifts. And a one event shift M is a shift. So a shift has no structure. It's a shift of sets. So this is a set, you should not assume anything. It's a shift uh, such that if you evaluate, evaluate this shift on the product X cross A1, it doesn't see A1, it is A1 invariant, like homotopy invariant, okay? So if you assume this, you have the morphism, the projection from X to uh, cross A1 to X, shift reverse, and you compose, this is a bijection. So this is an A1 invariant shift. For instance, GM, or an abelian variety, can be considered as a shift, so of course it's a smooth scheme. It's an A1 event shift. It's the natural place where the pi zero A1 live. Pi zero A1 is an A1 event shift, mostly, okay? Now you have a general notion because uh, uh, generally, so I proved that after uh, the fundamental uh, work with Wojewski that all homotopy shifts of any space here for n uh, at least uh, greater or equal to 2 or abelian homotopy shifts, the pi one can be non-abelian, are much more than that. Strictly A1 invariant shifts of abelian groups. So a pi zero is just a shift of sets. But uh, pi n, n greater or equal to 2, is a shift of abelian groups. There's an abelian structure. It's A1 invariant, but in fact, it's much more. Strictly A1 invariant, so M is strictly A1 invariant. It's a definition, if and only if, for any smooth scheme. So here I have to put a big word, uh, cohomology. Uh, if you have a shift of abelian groups, on the side, you can define for any object, X, smooth scheme, its cohomology. Uh, the cohomology, so it's a generalization of this, the H0 is this one. The first cohomology group is just a group of sections. But you can define, generalize uh, cohomology in this way. Uh, if you compute the cohomology of X cross A1 with value in M, so M is a shift of Abelian group, then, using the same uh, evaluation to projection here, this should be an isomorphism. So the cohomology doesn't see as well A1. Okay? In uh, classical topology, if you take a discrete Abelian group and take singular cohomology, uh, or, or if you take manifolds, different level manifold, and take shift cohomology uh, using Zariski, in fact, the shift of, constant shift of Abelian group satisfies this automatically. Instead of A1, you use uh, the interval, 0, 1, open. Uh, we, we have no boundary. 
But here it's more complicated. You have A1 invariant and you have strictly A1 invariant, which are much trickier. Let me give you some examples um, of these. And all the homotopy sheaves are of this type. And the Postnikov tower exists in this world as well. And you can uh, build a space up to A1 homotopy by starting, so the pi zero is trivial here. Then you have the pi one. It can be abelian or not. And then you have uh, higher and higher Postnikov sections. And the fiber of this, uh, in each successive fiber in this uh, tower are the homotopy sheaves. And they have this property. So it's non-trivial, but it's true. And uh, in fact, many, many examples were known before. Example, for instance, a sheaf, A1 invariant sheaf, it was one of the fundamental results of Wojewski over a perfect field. You take a sheaf, which is A1 invariant in this sense, so naively A1 invariant, but a sheaf with transfer. A sheaf of abelian group. with transfers, then it is strictly A1 invariant. And this is due to Vladimir Wojewodski. It was fundamental in his work on motifs. It means if you are a sheaf and you are A1 invariant in naive sense, but if you have an extra structure of transfers, satisfying some axiom, non-trivial, then in fact, automatically you have this, okay? But you have other, in fact, it's very often related to sheaves, to transfers, sorry. Um, you can define for any x the free strictly A1 event shift generated by x. So this is a strictly A1 event shift, strictly A1 event shift uh, with the property that om for any m, take any other strictly A1 event shift here morphism of strictly A1 invariant shifts from this H0 A1 to M is just the same thing as a group of sections. So it means this, as I told you, M is like a space. This, an element here, correspond to a map from X to M. But M is a strictly A1 invariant shift, so it has a strong property here. And there is a universal, which is called the free, strictly A1 event shift. So there is a section of, uh, global section of this shift on X, and this extends uniquely this way, okay? And this is a strict, uh, free, a strictly A1 event shift in this way. This gives you a lot of, uh, unfortunately, uh, in topology, it's very easy to compute. It's a free, uh, discrete, Abelian group generated by X is the free Abelian group on the set of connected components. Here it's more complicated, but this object exists uh, and it's tricky. The main example, and this is the, what is related to the work that uh, Roy mentioned at the beginning. If you take the H0 A1, so GM is a smooth scheme, so it's a space in this world. There is a natural section, a rational point, the unit, one. And uh, as in topology, you can define the smash product. If you have a two-pointed uh, spaces, you can define the smash product. You take the product modulo the uh, wage inside the product. Uh, in topology, if you take the smash product of S1, N times by itself, you get Sn, the n-dimensional sphere, okay? So this is kind of a, an example of an n-dimensional sphere in this world, but twisted, of course, okay? Because it's A1 invariant, this one. So it's, the, it's a zero-dimensional sphere, but twisted. Uh, so this is, by definition, what I call the milner witt k theory shift in weight n. So this is the way it appears. If you have this structure that you discover using the Postnikov tower, and you try to understand the free sheaf on this one, which means if you have n units somewhere on the scheme, you have n uh, invertible function, then it, it means using this property that you can map x uniquely, canonically to this sheaf here. So it's a free 
strictly one event shift on n units. So it's a very natural object. Uh, it's really like the, the HN of a sphere uh, or something like that. So, and it's related to the min of it K theory of um, and ramified shift. So maybe I should give you, well, a quick definition. The min of it K theory, if you know the min of K theory, it's uh, analogous but a bit more complicated, a bit of a field, F. So it's a Z-graded algebra, Z-graded, so both direction. You take the free algebra over the set of unit of a field, so F is a general field, commutative field. You take the unit of F and you add, so it's the new stuff compared to uh, minor case theory. So here, this is in degree plus one, and this is the eta, morphism, is in degree minus one. Divided by a set of relation, I will maybe not write it because, yeah, it's, it's been not explained, but you have one of them is this. The cup product of a unit by one minus a unit, if of course u is not equal to one, should be zero. It's called the Steinberg relation. It's also occurring in minor case theory. So what is uh, really amazing is that on the blackboard, I define you something completely abstract, formal, free stuff, and the free stuff on GM smash N give you this. Okay, it's come, pops up from nothing because it was known, of course, this was known before, uh, from Milno and so on, but it comes from this definition here. Uh, plus, uh, yeah, so you have also here to understand the eta, the symbol in Milno case here is multiplicative, here it's not, and this is the failure of eta, this was explained to me by Mike Hopkins. It's U plus the symbol V in degree one, plus eta cap u cap v. So these are degree one. This equation is degree one. One plus one is two, minus one, it is in degree one. Okay, plus some other. And you see that if you, uh, in this ring, so it's really amazing, you get this, okay? <clears throat> Here it's in degree positive. And in this algebra, if you kill eta, you get the min k theory, exactly. Okay, and this has to do with the mention, the stuff I mentioned. I told you that the morphism here is the universal covering of Pn for n greater or equal to 2, except for P1. This is not the universal covering, because if you look at the real points here, the real point of that is R2 minus 0, it's S1, and the real point is also S1. And the eta, it is this eta, is a non-trivial morphism. If you evaluate on R, is the multiplication by two. So it's a non-trivial morphism. And this is exactly this one. So this is the mess, which explains why uh, the Miller case theory in this world becomes mixed with real phenomena, which are related to the quadratic form stuff mentioned by uh, Roy. Uh, it is this eta here. And let me mention, so to finish with this here, and I will go to the last step. The mean of it case here defined this way of a field is exactly the Grotendieck Witt ring of F of quadratic forms. So this definition defines you in degree zero. It's very strange definition defines you the cotton glittering of isomorphic classes on non degenerate symmetric binary form over any field K, even in Cartesian 2. And it comes natural uh, in this homotopy theory stuff. Okay? So now uh, let me go back to one more definition. So if you want to compute, you end up with analyzing this stuff. Okay, you have to. For instance, uh, I could, and this has been improved very much, I could uh, define the Euler class if you take a vector bundle of degree n or a smooth affine scheme of dimension n, I could define an Euler class into some cohomology group of x with value in this k and min of it, and prove that uh, this other class is zero if and only if the vector bundle split of a trivial line bundle. 
So it's, it's like in topology. And it uses these kind of things very naturally. You cannot avoid this. So now, what could we do? Um, this is. So with, let me try to be quick now, with Anand Sawat, Want. It's a recent work. We uh, describe for any reasonable uh, smooth case scheme. X. Um, so a pro chain complex, unfortunately, technically, it's a pro. It means it's a diagram of chain complex. It's not only a chain complex, but in fact, I tell you right now, we also conjecture it's, it is constant. It means at the end, the, chain, the pro chain complex is a constant chain complex. It is true in most cases we can compute, but formally, it gives you a diagram of chain complex. I have no time to explain this, which we call the cellular chain complex. It's a chain complex of such object. It's a chain complex of strictly A1 invariant sheaves. And the property is formal again, so it's a pro, okay? But in many, many cases, it's constant and explicit, such that um, Morphism of this chain complex to any strictly A1 invariant shift. So it represents the cohomology. It's isomorphic to the cohomology of X with quotient in M. So, in fact, it's a very naive approach to motives, if you want. Uh, you just start with the cohomology, which is something, uh, cohomology with value in these strictly A1 invariant shifts, which are natural, and you want to represent this in some category. What Wojewski or what we did somehow using the stable A1 homotopy category, you could do this, but with a more complicated category here. Here you can directly try to make it here, but this should be a complex of sheaves of the same type. Formally, it's not so easy. Uh, it's a pro object, but in fact, we conjecture that it is, uh, it is constant for any. Uh, X. Okay, so let me finish now in one minute by a theorem and a, and a dream. A theorem. Everything what I said here is true for smooth projective surfaces. So let X be a smooth connected A1 connected surface, uh, not surface, over K. K is perfect, so X is A1 connected. If and only if X is rational. So it means the function field of X is uh, the field of fraction of P2, which means it's like you can pass from X to uh, P2 by a sequence, final sequence of blow up and blow down. But with, uh, it's more complicated with also not only rational point, okay, with point with a bigger residue field and so on, okay, but it's true as well. And for that, for Zool, we can prove the conjecture is constant and satisfies Poincaré duality. In a fine way, so, uh, it's constant and satisfies Poincaré duality uh, in a fine way because Poincaré duality is easy, again in textbook, if X is orientable. If X is orientable, the Poincaré duality is just the duality between this constant chain complex and itself by some pairing map, mapping to some shift of, uh, in that case, it would be K2 min of it. But there is also a Poincaré duality when X is not orientable. You have to take care of the orientation line bundle of X. Okay, so you have to, so it's possible to twist this, and it is true. Uh, one of the, so to finish, remark one, 
two and three, but I will have no time to say three. Uh, the remark one is that, uh, in fact, this theorem is stable, basically, under blow up. So what I mean is that we can prove much more if you know the conjecture from one and you blow up in this variety something for which you know so, then you know the result for and everything for the blow up variety. Uh, the second one is something I forgot. And the last one, sorry, yeah, I have that in here, and I forgot maybe it will come with some question. The last one is surgery. I will not have time to do this because I'm already done. Um, well, there is a surgery approach in topology, just I say this for the one who maybe knows, if you take a compact manifold, compact differentiable manifold with a boundary, you look at the structure, I would put right away, the simple structure, uh, of X. This is the set of uh, simple weak equivalents to X from a manifold of the same dimension of degree one. Uh, so it means it should uh, preserve the orientation. We assume X is oriented. So you can twist this if you want, but uh, yeah, it's uh, complicated. So it's really almost basically, if you divide this by the set of simple self homotopy equivalents of X, it's basically the set of isomorphic classes, differentiable uh, isomorphic classes of manifolds which are homotopical to X. So it's very explicit. Uh, you can map this to the normal set, which is a set of uh, morphies analog from a manifold of the same dimension to X of degree one. So it's much weaker. It's not a simple weak equivalent. And here you have L groups, LN of the pi one with the S simple, and here you have an action. So my dream, and in fact, the reason why I wanted to make this, in fact, this try to try to make this available here uh, was one of the reasons why I tried to do A1 homotopy theory, to say, let's pick up some perfectly smooth variety and try to do the same thing. Now you can basically define, so you can guess something here and here, you have the pi one, you can define some algebraic surgery group and so on. This you can perfectly define since the work with Wojewski and now, this uh, simple homotopy stuff here, we can define in most cases using this cellular chain complex because it's a finite cellular chain complex, not like the other one. You don't need any conjecture. It's a finite bounded from zero to the dimension uh, consisting in all the case we know of uh, explicit sheaves like K and Mindorvit or direct sum and so on. And with this kind of chain complex, you can define the weighted torsion of a homotopy equivalence. And this is exactly what you need to define the notion of simple weak equivalence. So it's not trivial, it's a bit combinatoric and so on, but now I claim I'm happy I can define all the members of this uh, sequence here. So in topology it's exact, except that I don't know here how to define the operation, but uh, it's work in progress. And I will uh, thank you very much for listening. Cellular there means like it's in a localized subcategory generated by spheres? Uh, no, so cellular, so cellular is a general definition, but for a smooth scheme which admits a cellular structure, like a split group, for instance, you have a cellular structure, uh, uh, the cell complex, the, this chain complex become isomorphic to the cellular one, to the very one. So this is the one we consider, so it was discovered by uh, accident. And uh, we are studying a split algebraic group and we discover a chain complex which was finite, explicit, and we discovered that the definition was in fact completely abstract, exactly this, uh, or this one here. Uh, but if you have a reasonable structure on X, then in fact you can compute it very concretely with a cellular structure, exactly. And you can, the point is that you, it's finite, and you can really compute. You can compute for PN, and if you blow up something that you understand is stable, you can compute everything, so it's completely computable. And this is the reason why you can uh, now define the notion of uh, simple. I'm not completely sure it's the correct one, but I'm, I'm happy there is at least a one uh, explicit definition here. Yeah. So PN is, is what? N plus one, yeah? Pi one of P1, is that? Pi one of P1, so pi one of P1, so you look at these uh, vibrations, we have GM, so the vibration is A2 minus zero, P1, P1, and BGM. So the pi one of P1 is a 
extension of GM by K2 Minovit. And in fact, it's a universal central extension. And it's a non-competitive fundamental group. Surprisingly, uh, the fundamental group of P1 is the only one for collective spaces which is non-abelian. But it's universal. And the, the only uh, formula you can find which fits with real points and complex points. Somehow, yeah. yeah. Thank you. So, sorry, <clears throat> well, uh, this is partly, but this, uh, yeah, this kind of thing is uh, in this paper, and which is accepted now. Oh. We are happy we are, well, we were, I mean, yeah. It's on the archive, uh, yet, right? it's on the archive yeah, but now it's published oh. by Advance. Oh, okay. We try, uh, I mean, I, I said, uh, Anan, I will not make it in the very big journals. We tried a long time, and then we, no. Yeah, yeah, this is one. But we are working on the sequel. Oh. Yeah. But this is kind of my stuff, this kind of things. Uh, I mean, I'm trying to do this. I don't know if you know this enough. I don't this know. This surgery, yeah, 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 yeah. I've yeah, yeah. It's, I've it's it. really amazing. Yeah. I mean, uh, the usual L group? Yeah. I mean, no, because here you put the fundamental group, the A1 from ah, the group. Okay, okay. okay, so you have to make the analog. Oh. Yeah, but yeah, you can define this, and you can define analog, so you can do the same thing. All what the people, uh, Raniski and co, uh, yeah, define, I you can, can uh, yep. <coughs> so you have a shift of group and you do this. But probably you have to, oh, there is a lecture after that, or? Okay, okay, I guess there is a class. So you, you maybe should take your, sorry, I didn't know that there is a. When are you starting? Half. 